Um, no, it's not that tough. I mean, well, I get up between 4 and 4.30. I'm going to make up at 5.48. For some unusual reason, I'm supposed to be there at 5.40. I think because I'm always late, so I'm going to have six. How long does it take you to do the, the makeup? Half a day. <laughs> no, well, hair and makeup takes two hours, and we're on the set, and we start shooting until 6 or 7. Mm. What, what do you look like before the makeup goes on? Just like this. It's a waste of time. <laughs> You have done very well out of various books and records for exercises and keeping the body beautiful. That's that's one of your, your things, isn't it? Millions of people buy the books and well, listen to you when you talk about keeping fit and all. How, how much time of the day do you give to actually keeping the body beautiful? Well, it, it's an entire concept of a way of living. It's, um, I'd say I work out about 15 minutes a day and, and an hour or more on Sundays and I play sports. But my concept is, is to be active in your life, not, not to necessarily go to a, a class or have to have equipment or have to take away from your life in total, but to be able to stay in shape, take good care of yourself, eat properly, start on the inside. And also be happy. Spend time with. Well, it's not easy when you're watching what you eat. You've got to do all that no, exercise. No, How do you stay it's happy? Not like it's not like it's not like it. I know. In my book, I, I explain that, that if I want chocolate cake, I have it. How often? Well, there's moderation. There's a thing called moderation. There's a price you pay in terms of if you if you take from here, you add here, and and, and that's the way life should be. You should be able to enjoy everything. But you said your best features. You like to see the the muscles of your back rippling beneath the skin. You exercise, it has it's been said, in the nude. Yes, but you like it, yes it is. No, 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 what I said, no, what I said was the best way to begin exercising is to look at yourself in the nude. I used to do a thing years ago, well, Nutritionist said the best way of judging whether you needed to lose weight was take off all your clothes and jump up and down in front of the mirror. And then the bits that were supposed to bob up and down, that was fine. It was all the other bits bobbing up and down. That's not the principle under which you're working, is it? That's not my book at all. I see. I see. Where do you think, though? I say, the average woman who's got a family to bring up. My book is for the average woman, because she can do it at home while she's taking care of the children. She can do it on the phone. She can do it while driving the car. If she's a working woman, she can do it in the office. She can do it on a lunch break. That's when I do it. Can she do it doing the washing up and cleaning the floor? And yes, absolutely. That's the whole point, because I think it's silly if you think that someone has enough money to join an exclusive club or to have someone come to their home and train them or leave the house for an hour every day, they won't do it for the rest of their lives. And what I like is for people to live very long, healthy lives. I'm not, I didn't write the book in order to make more money. I wrote it because it's a very good idea and it works. Mm. But how do you know what the average woman can do? Or what, because I started out that way. You were never an average woman. <laughs> no, when I started, when I began working, when I first went out into the world to make my way, I certainly couldn't afford exercise classes. And now that I can, I choose not to because I find this a better way to live. But isn't it, isn't it this West Coast thing of youth? Everybody must look youthful. Why? No, it's not looking youthful. I say that in the book. I'm 34 years old, and I look... I think 34. I look... A happy 34. <laughs> Absolutely. I do. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, I do. I do. I look a healthy 34, and that's how I want to be the rest of my life. I want to look as, as good as my age. You don't want to look 34 for the rest of your life? No, no. When I'm 44, if you say, no, you really look wonderful. And you look a wonderful 44. That's, that's, that's all I want. No, but I there is this kind of obsession this. with trying to look younger than you are. And, and no, eventually... That was mine. You're speaking about the West Coast. I, you're talking about a sweeping, a sweeping generality. I'm not a sweeping generality. Certainly not. <laughs> but I'm, I'm serious about it. It means a lot to me. And that, that's why I put it down on paper. But beauty isn't everything. No, well, appearance not. isn't everything. No, it's not. And too much emphasis is put on it. But there is a... You're because putting all there, the emphasis Because on. there is... No, you haven't read the book, have you? No. Well, <laughs> how can you sit here and have this conversation? The read is difficult. Of, of 
the second book I've just written is that next time someone says, you know, you're beautiful, you can walk away knowing that they mean inside out. Inside and out. <laughs> you got it, right? Yes. Okay. I, I don't have to believe it. No, but that's how I feel about it. Yeah. I, I, I think that that feeling good about yourself inside, knowing that you're doing something for your body. It's a bit narcissistic, though, isn't it? A bit narcissistic. Where are you going to move when it wears out? It's going to wear out, isn't it? But why not take good care of it? You take you care of your brain. You can't stop it wearing out, ever. Why, why is your body less important than your brain? Is the house for your brain? Mm hmm. <laughs> yes. I mean, you take care of the house, you repaint it when it needs it, don't you? But the trouble is that a lot of people who follow your regimen um, don't start from the same position as you do, if you see what I mean. But my, and I say that I don't want anyone to try and look the way I do. I want them to be their best. Mm. That's, that's all. I would like everyone to feel their best. They don't have to. If you want to feel lousy, that's up to you. <laughs> giving an option. I'm giving a, another way to live. And if someone chooses not to, that's that's their choice. But if they choose to, and they feel better for it, then that's the choice. You know, there's a danger of people taking all this kind of thing to extremes and becoming very obsessed there's always with themselves. That danger. There's always that danger. It's the same danger of, of someone overeating and becoming obese, or someone taking anything to an extreme. If I offer a way of life and I've offered one in moderation, and someone takes it to an extreme, I can't be responsible any more than you can be if someone becomes addicted to television because they watch you. <laughs> I don't think there's much chance of that. <laughs> you want to say that, that exercise has the added bonus of improving your love life. Yes, yes. I think that if you have more stamina, if you're healthier, if you feel better physically and emotionally, then, you, then you're more generous with yourself with others because you feel better about yourself. Um, how generous should you be? <laughs> I think it depends on the relationship. There's been stories recently that Dallas stars have perhaps been asking a bit too much money and that there's a chance that there might be the occasional axing. I know that you all make a great deal of money. Is there a chance that old Patty might... Get the chop? Like buy it? Mm. Um, I don't know. I, in fact, when I arrived here uh, at the airport a few days ago, I was greeted by someone who handed me the newspaper with the stories, and I'd never heard or seen anything about it before. So I suppose I'll find out when I get back. Does it surprise you when you leave America and you go around internationally, the reaction to you? I mean, are you aware how popular the series is? I think it's too large for me to grasp. I, I do know that I've just been overwhelmed by the reception I've had here. The people have been so lovely, just so overwhelmingly lovely this last week that, that um, I'm tempted to move back. <laughs> it's, it's just been... I'm one... always afraid that people like you are going to say, London is my second home. And that I really love it and all this, because we, we don't much like Americans who do all that stuff. <laughs> well, I moved to America from London. What was you here in the first place? I lived here until I was nine. Yeah? Now we're glad to see you back again. <laughs> I'm John Mortimer and Noel Edmonds. Now next week at about the same time, my guests will be Richard Bryars, Gerald Priestland, and from the United States, John Rivers. I hope you'll join me for another dose of organ next Saturday about the same time. Till then, have a good weekend. Good night.